Good morning, Sunrise Church. How is everyone this beautiful Sunday morning? Awesome. Well, if you guys want to go ahead and stand on your feet, we're going to enter into a time of worship. We're so glad to have you this morning. How many is um, just happy to be in the house of the Lord? Let me see your hand. Amen. Amen. Father, we just worship you, God. We just invite your presence into this house. We just invite you to come and have your way and do whatever you would do, Father God. Because you're so worthy, God, of our praise. God, you're worthy of um, adoration, Father. So we just exalt you. In Jesus' name, amen. Your loving kindness, your tender mercy, Lord, we can fathom your matchless beauty. You have called us to a greater purpose, to worship you and Lord.
drink will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong
everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not fade, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in And 
by grace I'm free, you've rescued me, all I am is yours, I found a love greater than life itself, I found a hope stronger and nothing compares, I once was lost. I 
And he is mine Come into your garden And take delight in me Take delight in me I am my beloved And he is mine Come into your garden And take delight in me Take delight in me To your garden and take delight in me. Take delight in me. Oh, I say, I am my beloved and he is mine. Come into your garden and take delight in me. Take delight in me.
worship necessary listen to me church is unceasing worship necessary ask one of the four living creatures if unceasing worship is necessary it's necessary it, it's it's necessary we, sh we should bring our a game when we come into the house of the Lord when it pertains to our worship because whatever's been going on out there, and I realize there's some things that go on out there that try to steal our worship. But now our, the worship's being determined by the way we bring in our worship to church. Amen? Because what's going on out there we, we bring in here. And if worship's going on out there, worship's going on in here it should be unceasing worship in our life amen unceasing worship in our life here's why Isaiah 40 31 because there's going to be things that are going to come our way the enemy does not like what we're doing we're beyond that It cannot stop our worship. We sang about it earlier this morning. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those that wait upon the Lord... How many of you have ever got out in front of Him? Amen. It'll completely throw you off. Amen. I was waiting on Him yesterday, and some things came my way to completely throw me off. Unexpected. It's always that way, isn't it? That's the way the enemy operates. He wants to try to catch us off guard. But we don't need to be, be caught off guard. That's what God told me. Because those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. There's, there's where it's at. We can run this race and not grow weary. We can walk and not faint if we'll continue to wait on God. Amen. Father God, we just offer up worship to you this morning. Come on, church. Let's do that right now. You, you're going to have to get beyond what's going on. You're going to have to get beyond what you're feeling. You ever wonder why some people can get caught up in His presence and others can't? It's called a made-up mindset. I'm going on. God is my strength. God is my source. I will not be defeated. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. You've got to get determined. 
Church, it's the determination that will get you out of here on the first train. The rapture, the first ticket. It's determination. It's being led by the Spirit. And when we're led by the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? Determination is what's going to get us out of here. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm determined. I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship you forever. I'm going to worship you forever, God. Lord, we praise you. We worship you this morning. We magnify you. Be with those in our body, God, who are sick this morning and that need a touch from heaven. If that's you this morning, lift both hands to heaven if you need a touch. If you need a touch this morning, go ahead and stretch out both hands to heaven. Father, I I pray right now, God, that you'll release your glory in this house this morning, God, that every need will be met this morning. God, you know what each and every situation and circumstance is here, God. Lord, you know what these hands represent, God. Lord, and we, we release it to you this morning, God. We release it to you. Come on, release it to him this morning. We serve a big God. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. We magnify you, God. It's going to be awful heavy unless you release it. Whatever it is you need to release, you better release it. You better release it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in His presence this morning. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you, worship team. We've got a couple of quick announcements we want to um, bring your way. One of them is our Great Awakening um, the Great Awakening tour that's been going across the United States of America and the world. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, very, very unique individual. Um, they're, they're, they're coming to sunrise. The Great Awakening Tour is coming to sunrise. You want to be a part of every service. We're going to be going out into the neighborhood and compelling people to come in. And this is going to be phenomenal. Um, be praying and fasting about October 22nd through November 1st nightly at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss a single um, service. God's going to be doing some incredible things that week in Sunrise. Church will never be the same. We're being set up for it right now. God's going to stretch you. God's going to call you. and He's going to call you out of your comfort zone, I promise you. He's already started to deal with me about what's coming, and I'm getting very uncomfortable about it. That's your flesh. Amen? That's your flesh. Men's breakfast will be this month on the 19th at 8 a.m. Men, come out and be a part of men's breakfast. Um, Our last one, we had a great turnout and just a wonderful time together. And then on November 9th, we're going to be telling you more about it. The ladies are having a get-together. We're going to be telling you more about that as time gets closer to that date, but that's going to be on November 9th. So we're excited about the things that God's doing here. Thanksgiving baskets are coming up. We're going to have a brochure next week, and we'll be telling you more about that. We're going to go out and just bless people. Amen. And then last but not least, um, rally night. I need as many of you as can come out uh, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. There's some wonderful things going on here at the church and the school, and a lot of this ties together because the the, the school is a ministry of our church. Amen. And I need as many of you who can to come out Tuesday night. We're going to be talking about a gala that we're having um, on the 21st of November, probably our largest fundraising event of the year. Yes, it does take money um, to move ministries forward, okay, and to keep the lights on. Amen? I would much rather have the lights on this morning than have them off. Amen? I would much rather have the air conditioner on than have it off. Amen? I would much rather hear Pastor preach with a microphone than me not be able to hear him and have a sound system. So, and same thing with the school. It takes a lot of money to move these ministries forward. And if everybody's doing their part, God can do incredible things. And so we need you to come out Tuesday night at 7. Really, all we're needing is to talk to you about what we're doing on the 21st of November. Sheriff Grady Judd 
will be our guest speaker. Everybody is thrilled about Sheriff Grady Judd coming out on November 21st. I have heard two negative reports. You're not bringing him out, are you? I mean, everything else was positive, and but I heard two negative reports about Sheriff Judd, but I come to find out it was somebody who was in trouble with the law. So that's okay. I understand that. Been there, done that, okay? Before I got saved, okay? There are people are... You... Anyway, Sheriff Judd's a wonderful man of God. We're very privileged to have him in our county. And he, as a matter of fact, God is using him in such a mighty way. Now he's over several things in the state of Florida. So God is using this man. But he's going to come November 21st and, and be with us, our guest speaker. But we need help selling tickets. It's, it's pretty simple. And just getting word out and maybe getting some people who will come out to the dinner. It, last week we had a lot of information that we put out there, and it was a lot. But it's really simple. It just boils down to we just need to say, Lord, lead us across people who will come out and just support this ministry and what we're trying to do here in reaching souls for the glory of God. I've got testimony after testimony after testimony. See, only what we do for Christ is going to last. So don't be too busy doing other things. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. And this past week, I've just, I got testimony after testimony of young people that God's just doing incredible work. Um, is doing incredible work in their lives and in their families. And just in the natural, just desperate, dire situations. But God. Amen? But God can turn things around. How many of you would attest to that this morning? God turned some things around in my life. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. So we're excited about the things that God's doing. As Pastor Randy prepares to come receive the offering, Brother Bud's going to minister to us in song this morning. But Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, well, I need the church family to be here to support us. I need our church family here with us. We're only going to be here 35, 45 minutes at tops. And, and we'll explain more to you um, about that Tuesday night. So come out and support the work that God's doing. I believe you're here this morning, so I believe you're behind what God's doing and then what God's doing through um, Pastor Randy and Sister Madeline, our under-shepherds. Um, we're going to reach this community for the glory of God. Well, I got three amens, Pastor. We're going to reach this community for the glory of God. Amen. I believe that. We're going to do that. And God's going to lay some strategic things out this month, so you need to be a part of every service and just simply say, God, here I am, send me. God, here I am, send me. Come on and say that right now. Say, God... Here I am, send me. He will. Amen. God's going to reveal some incredible things to us. Get Pastor Randy a hand this morning as he comes to receive um, the offering, the tithe and the offering. Praise God. our lives sound from time to time we just go into feedback that's how we sound from time to time what note is that oh I was just calling on the musicians but you're on the way out the door Pastor Steve gets music but I don't so. it's okay it's alright I'm okay with it talk to you after church Oh, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. All right, I thought you'd get it after a while. Praise God. Um, Exodus chapter 35. We're going to go. We're going to go Old Testament today. Um, Y'all can. Ear. Those who have ears hear what the pastor's saying to the church. It's a little ringy, so help adjust me. It's probably, that's whatever. That's good. Verse Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35. 
the good news is you're doing great. Um, according to uh, what the financial office tells me, you had a strong summer. We didn't have summer slump. Okay? How? Well, and a few have just. Well, uh, yay, God! Hallelujah! You ought to be glad because he, pro he prospered you. You're not off in a hospital somewhere. Thank the Lord. It's very, very strong. And you've had an even stronger September. You just finished September. and I got the report on September and did really good. So praise God for it. Praise God for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Needs are being met. Souls are being touched for the kingdom. Disciples are being raised up. From the, from the knee highs to the real highs. Hallelujah. The children to the adults. Everybody, this is for everybody because this is, this is kingdom ministry. So thank the Lord. Uh, you want to you wanna be involved in the things that are upcoming here in the next few days. Just, I mean, really, really get, get plugged in to what God's doing. Um, and, and don't miss it. For those of you that stayed home today that are watching by internet, the Holy Spirit instructed me to tell you to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Together. That doesn't mean by TV or the internet. It means together. You can't be together with us if you're at the house. Now, if you're not here, I pray you're homesick. So... That you can be miserable. And then when the Lord heals you, you'll really want to get to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I heard the testimony of a man that was laying in a hospital bed. And he had had a, had a stroke. And he said um, his daughter told him to start listening to the radio. And he heard a church preaching the gospel. And he said, I'm going to church. And when he got to church... Um, he had had parts of his body that were just, you know, you've seen people with a stroke. They, their limbs just kind of hang limp. And he was on a cane. And as soon as he walked in the door, the Lord healed him. Raised him up. Amen. Amen. Now, can God heal you at the house? Sure he can. He can heal you at the house. You can trust him. But it would be better if he was here. Because you need to be with the saints. You need to learn to be obedient. You need to learn to be disciplined. You need to get the word in you. Okay? You need to interact with you need to interact with the saints. Okay? All that's good for you. Because the word of the Lord is good for for reproof and rebuke and instruction in righteousness. So the Lord's desiring to instruct you. So if you're if you're watching, keep keep watching. We'll, if you're homesick, we pray, we do pray for you. I'll pray for you. Won't we pray for them, body of Christ? Okay. All right. I always run the risk of when I put truth out there. Sometimes truth will make us mad. Instead of setting us free. Okay? Is the truth setting you free? Thank the Lord. Verse 22 of Exodus 35. They came both men and women who were all willing hearted. Everybody say willing hearted. Willing hearted. How many know that the, 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 the key to servanthood in the body of Christ is a willing heart? You have to be willing hearted. So men and women, willing-hearted, <clears throat> and they brought brooches, earrings, or nose rings. Now, see, some of y'all think that these, 
stuff that the kids are wearing today and their noses and their lips and theirs is new. They were doing it back in the Old Testament. Exodus is already there. I even found the word tattoo in my devotion this week and reading in Isaiah. The word tattoos in there. So they go, there's all kinds of stuff. As, as the writer of Ecclesiastes said, there's nothing new under the sun. With it. So here, here we go. So they had earrings, nose rings, signet rings, armlets, necklaces, all jewels of gold, everyone bringing an offering of gold to the Lord. Everybody get that? We even had, during Brandon Spiker's revival, we had pearls, we had watches, we had rings, we had earrings. Some people just gave stuff. Well, what'd you do with it? I put it in an envelope and gave it to Brother Spiker. Said, do what you want to do with it. All right? See? See, that's what they did. They brought this. And everyone with whom was found blue or purple or scarlet stuff of fine linen or goat's hair or ram skins made red and tanny or dolphin or porpoise skins brought them. Everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found any acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. All the women who had ability and were wise-hearted. Everybody say wise-hearted. Not everybody's wise-hearted. But these women were wise-hearted, spun with their hands, And brought what they had, spun of blue and purple and scarlet stuff and fine linen. All the women who had ability and whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom. Lord, stir us up. Stir us up in wisdom. Spun the goat's hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice, and oil for the light, and for the atoning oil, and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites brought a free will offering to the Lord. Free will. People who just gave out of their own free will. They didn't have to be coerced. They didn't have to be motivated. They Just out of their free will, out of their love for the Lord. They brought a free will offering to the Lord, all men and women, whose hearts made them willing. This is good. Y'all are looking at me like, wow, pastor, this is new teaching. We've never heard this before. This is OT, guys. This is Old Testament. But look at what, look at the spirit that's in people. The people of God. I'm talking about the people of God. I'm talking about the world. Let let, let me keep that verse up there, but let me just pause and say, a survey among waitresses of major food chains, for example, such as Cracker Barrel, Applebee's, Chili's, major food chains across the nation, a survey among waitresses say that the stingiest people who tip are Christians. Do you get that? Uh huh. The stingiest people who tip are Christians. Are you getting that? The most generous people who give ought to be Christians. When you tip. Now, if we have trouble tipping the waitress, how are we handling what we do with God? God won't have a stroke if you put a 20 or a $100 bill in the offering plate, but most of the time He sees George. Get me? Hmm? I'm talking about people who are willing hearted. I'm just giving you scripture now. I'm not going to ask, I'm not asking you to do anything except out of your own free will. 
But look what the blessing, the blessing of the Lord comes because he says their hearts made them willing and moved them to bring anything. Well, how is it that they could possibly even entertain the thought of doing that? Is because they understood that God owned everything. So when he owns everything, you can give him anything. Right? Absolutely. Because he says anything for the work which the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done. The work. See, we've got a work to do here. But we're bound and our hands are tied if we don't have the resources in which to be able to do it. To reach folks with the gospel. Because I can tell you as pastor here. I don't hoard money. It comes in. It goes out. It comes in. It goes out. Why? For the gospel. For the betterment of the kingdom. Okay. I dare say if I walked over and turned off both thermostats and we left the lights going and the temp started going from 72 up to 82, some of us pretty soon, I know when you're uncomfortable because you start doing this. And some of you are doing it, you know, okay? You understand? When it gets a little uncomfortable, just uncomfortable. What would it be if it was really hot in here? Okay? Thank God for the air conditioner. All right? Because I've got on three layers right now, and when I get wound up here in a minute, I'm going to be wet down by the time I get through. Because I don't perspire. I sweat. Okay? And it's all over me. Some of you come hug me after church. I'm not, going, I'm not going to apologize for it anymore. I'm just going to wipe it all over you. Put, I'm just going to give you, I'm going to christen you real good. Come on up and get you a hug after church. And I'm going to lay some sweat on you. Baptize you. Moses said to the Israelites, See the Lord called by name Bezalel, Bezle. Bezalel, Bezalel, B-E-Z-A-L-E-L, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He was of the praise tribe, in other words. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God. Well, my dear Lord. Could somebody be filled with the Spirit of God in the Old Testament? And the Holy Ghost hadn't even been poured out yet. Hallelujah. I'm glad the Holy Ghost showed up in the Old Testament, aren't you? He was filled with the Spirit of God. But guess what the Spirit of the Lord did for him? See, some of y'all think the Holy Ghost is just for goosebumps and making you feel good during praise and worship and helping you through tough times. But look what he did. He said he filled him with ability and wisdom with, uh uh-oh, Intelligence. Boy, some of us need that, don't we? I know I do. He filled him with intelligence and understanding and with knowledge and all craftsmanship. Wow. Man. You say, well, how does that work? Well, some things you can't figure out. You don't have time to Google it. Try asking the Holy Ghost, and he'll fill you with wisdom and give you intelligence and craftsmanship and ability. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask the Lord. Okay? That's a byproduct of your free will. That's a byproduct of your willing heart. That's a byproduct of you bringing to the Lord anything so he can bless you with everything. Anybody getting a hold of this this morning? He wants to bless you, but you can't just tip him. 
you need to bring him a free will offering. Okay? Now, I'm teaching you on this. I'm teaching this. And I do this. The Lord, the Lord in July con- convicted me about that because for years I'd gone and I was, I was intimidated by that because I grew up in Pentecostal circles where we preach from Malachi 3, will a man rob God where any of you rob me with tithes and offerings and so forth. And we put folks on a guilt trip instead of teaching them about the blessedness of giving and all of the things that follow those who give. You see? Because it's, an, it's a measure of your freedom in the Holy Ghost. A willing heart, a servant's heart, a giving heart is a measure of your freedom in the Holy Ghost. When you give God everything, then you're not tied to anything. Abraham, I want your boy. But God, he's the son of promise. You gave him to me. He said, I want your boy. Go up to the mountain. Sacrifice him. Worship me. Abraham went. Isaac says, Dad, where's the sacrifice? He said, don't worry about it, son. God's already taken care of it. He'll provide the lamb. Put him on the altar. Isaac put the, Abraham put the knife down. Don't take Isaac's life. Three times. Put it down. Put it down. Now I know your heart's really mine. Now I know your heart's really mine. Because you've spared not your own son. Can God identify with where you are in your struggle? Yeah. He who spared not his own son, meaning God, but freely gave him up for us all. Freely you receive, freely give. For God loves cheerful givers. Hallelujah. Everything I have belongs to God. I've given, I'm not saying this, and so don't anyone misinterpret, braggadocious or arrogant. The Lord has privileged me to give away two cars. Just giving them away. I just went and signed the title of them. People that needed them. Just give them away. Why? Because it was never mine to start with. Nothing you have is yours to start with. It's not yours to start with. God could require it of you. You could wind up in the hospital. And it's all gone. Then whose will it be? Your wife or your husband or your children to fight over. Unless you have a will. Okay? Understanding this? This is important. Okay? Because God says to us we need to have our house in order. So, let's give freely. Let's give willingly. So that the Lord can bless you with intelligence, with wisdom, and with a spirit whereby you can figure out things that you would not have normally figured out. The Spirit of the Lord will show you things. Because the Spirit of the Lord is not only in you, He'll come mightily upon you and direct you and how to accomplish things. One of the beautiful things I grew up with and heard heard the testimonies of as a young lad of a boy was men who didn't have the privilege of going to school. God called them into the ministry. I mean, have you heard these stories? Where they'd had, they didn't get to go to school. And God taught them how to read. The Holy Ghost came on them and gave them intelligence. Taught them how to read, and they could they could quote scripture like they were a walking Bible. It's 
fear of the Lord would come up, come upon them. Hallelujah. Listen, the Holy Ghost can do mighty things if we'll turn him loose. Okay? Now, be selfish with it. Because the Holy Ghost is wanting to do mighty things here. So, get ready for it. But you've got to have a willing heart. You ready? Praise the Lord. Where's, uh, where's the folks going to wait on us? We have servants here. They know that I sometimes I as I'm teaching, so they get ready. Hallelujah. See, and see, they serve you willingly. I was I, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. I'd rather be a willing servant. Well, how'd you start out, Pastor? I started out in one of the top positions. I got elevated right to the top. My dad, who was pastor at the time, said, Son, I want you to start out in one of the top positions. Preach your son. So we're going to sign you toilet clean. You get to start out cleaning the toilets. And if you're faithful at that, we'll elevate you. Let you start vacuuming the church along with cleaning the toilet. So I started out at one of those elevated positions. $25 a week. Big money. I was rich. I drove, a, I drove a Volkswagen and I could fill it up back in those days for $2. Gas was 10 cents a gallon. I'm ancient of days, aren't I? Y'all can't even remember those days. You're hearing me? Yeah. I started off learning to serve in the house of the Lord and learning to serve willingly. Not because I got the $25, because the $25 was nothing. And I got to be the minister of music too. I got to practice being that, but I eventually became a pretty good. But when I started and organized my first youth choir, I had 35 kids in the youth choir. So the Lord will bless you if you've got a willing heart. How many willing hearts in the house? Got willing? Ah, hallelujah. I'm glad I was talking to the right group. Stand on your feet and let's bless the Lord as you're waited on. Brother Bud's on stage ready to sing. And uh, he's, he's, got a, he's got a word from the Lord this morning. Let's lift up our, let's lift up our gifts before the Lord. Father... With willing hearts, with thankful hearts, with willing spirits, we offer to you the substance of all our increase, believing that you're going to not only supply, but you give abundance. Lord, we didn't come to tip you this morning. We came to, out of our free will, bless you and to offer an offering unto the Lord that will speak into our situation. It will speak blessing, not cursing. It will speak wealth, not poverty. And it will speak anointing and power and dominion over us. Because, Lord, we've learned that when we give voice to Your Word... That you are the yes and we are the amen. And I thank you for the anointing on your people. I thank you for the blessing that is not only on them now, but you've blessed in the past, therefore you will bless in the future. And that out of this will come great dreams, great desires, great anointings, and great advance of the kingdom of God. In this house, in this region. For we declare that not only are the prodigals coming home as a result of our willingness to serve you, but sons and daughters are being born into the kingdom. And for that we will be grateful and we will give you praise out of joyful and thankful hearts. For you are Jehovah Jireh. 
You are Jehovah Jireh. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Would you give voice to His word and declare that with me? My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And let all the church say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be seated as you give and bless the Lord. Good morning. How many of y'all know that one day all of us will stand before the Lord? Uh, whether we're in the right standing or not is yet to be seen, but we we pray that we'll all be ready to meet him. Do you do you wonder what you're going to say to him when, when you do stand face to face? How you going to react? I do. And, and this song here that I'm about to sing, it, it just well it blesses me because I know that that I will stand before it. I know in my heart that I'm ready. I'm ready. I've heard it said to do things right one must take time in a hurried pace there's often waste with no sense of reason or rhyme when I yeah in his presence start it over brother I, I just not uh, apologize I just forgot the words I've heard it said to do things right one must take their time in a hurried pace there's often waste with no sense of reason or rhyme but when I think of my new life in my brain new home the first thing that comes to mind is my time at the throne when it's my time I want to take my time to behold his face when it's my time I want to take my time to talk of his amazing grace I want to thank him for the load he bore and not leaving me alone when it's my time gonna take my time at his throne Imagine millions upon millions Can't you see them standing in line We're waiting for a moment or more Of the precious Savior's time When I finally stand in His presence I'll take a thousand years I think I'm going to ask him for two Just to thank him for His wonderful love And the grace that brought me through When it's my time going to take my time To behold his face And when it's my time going to take my time to talk of his amazing grace 
I want to thank him for the load he bore and not leaving me alone. When it's my time, gonna take my time at his throne. I want to thank him for the load he bore and not leaving me alone. And when it's my time, gonna take my time at his throne when it's my time thank you lord thank you i'm glad you started it over again took your time don't well, I'll tell you what, y'all are it's birthday stuff. And I would have really rubbed it in this this time. Sir, getting that senior discount, have the seven senior moments, senior discounts, all that good stuff. But I'm as young as I feel. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. So we've been we've been on the series the renewed mind and is God renewing our minds? Is He? He ought to be. Um, you, you ought to be living freer than you've ever lived in your life, um, quenching the thar- fiery darts of the enemy, getting rid of this stinking thinking business, all this stuff that's going on, and learning here to give voice to the word of the Lord. Because His loving kindness is from everlasting to everlasting. Heaven is speaking something to us. But the further I delve into this, heaven starts keeps on speaking new things to me. And this week He spoke something else that was new. And uh, I love it when we can speak things that the angels don't understand. Now, why I want you to be engaged today is because you need to hear the most, the more earnest give the more earnest heed to the word of the Lord. I was thinking here because some of us, when we don't have to be engaged, see, you should should have out your notepad, you should have out the word. You ought to be doing this. Okay? I teach teach high school Bible. I've undertaken high school Bible this year. And uh, every week, uh, some of my students are in here this morning and they're looking at me. But every week they have to journal from the Word. They have a devotional form and they, have, they fill it out. There's prayer time. There's application time. There's meditation time. And there's memorization of the Word. So they're committing this into their spirit. So we didn't show up here today for this to just be time for us to push the whole button. You know, and Sometimes I, I see the lights flashing, but nobody's home. You know. And we push the whole button on our minds and we're not engaged. So we leave here with nothing. We're empty. And we should give the more earnest heed to the word of the Lord because the instruction that comes from the word of the Lord is important for you because it's life-giving power and anointing in which you are to apply to your life. See, we didn't come here to use catchphrases or cliche words like, well, we're, we're living triumphantly. Greater is he that's within it. We, we know that for a surety because the word of God applied becomes the source of our strength. His word. So give heed to it. Give the more earnest heed to it. In other words, get, learn, learn to get, we've got, you've got to learn to give voice to the word of the Lord. Heaven wants to speak through you. Will you allow Him to speak through you? Even angels don't get it. But you should get it. You should operate in divine utterance. Remember last week we ended the message? 
And the question was asked, are you a voice or an echo? Seven sons of Sceva ran into a demoniac. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, we adjure you, come out of him. Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? They were an echo. They were parroting something. They, you ever seen parrots? You can teach them. There's some parrots, they can, they can mimic somebody's voice to a T. And some of us, we hear things and we just parrot stuff. We're an echo. We're just a repeater. God says, I want you to be a voice. That when you speak words in the earth, you speak with power. You speak with anointing. And that whatsoever you say comes to pass. Because you're a voice. Heaven backs up what you declare. We need more voices. we got plenty of echoes out there. Help us, Lord. Why? Because this comes from the heart of the heart of God. Now I'm almost ready to just go home today because right now because praise team and Pastor Steve already pretty much they just laid the groundwork and preached a bunch of it. So let's get into it. Isaiah chapter six. Isaiah chapter six. Verse one. Father, we're open to your word. Our minds are alert. Our spirits are receptive. We've been refreshed, praising and worshiping you this morning. We find rejuvenation. We find strength. And so, bring revelation to us today. Bring a fresh word that encourages, that empowers, that enables that we might live in freedom, we might walk in liberty, and represent you as we advance the kingdom of God in this earth with power and authority that is ours through the name called Jesus. We love you. Holy Spirit, enable us. Enable us to speak and enable us to hear. Anoint our lips today that we might give voice to your word. In Jesus' name. In the year that King Uzziah died, in a vision I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the skirts of his train filled the most holy part of the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, each covered his own face. And with two each covered his feet, and with two each flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who cried. It's that word again. The foundation shook. What did I tell you last week? God's going to shake some things in your life. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So don't blame the devil for it. God's sending it. Why? So you don't get comfortable. Because when you get too comfortable, you become complacent with the things of God. The scripture instructs you, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe when the church gets lazy. Woe when the church gets to be a bunch of spiritual fat cats that think they don't need the anointing and the presence of the Lord anymore. So then we just get, we get hung up in tradition and we just go through the mechanics and we call it the presence of God and all we're doing is going through a mechanism of worship instead of an organism. God called you to be alive and vibrant and powerful. Didn't call you to come go through the motions. Called you to be alive and anointed with his power. And the house was filled with smoke. And then I said, woe is me, for I'm undone and ruined because I'm a man of unclean lips. 
And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim, heavenly beings to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from off the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity and guilt are taken away. And your sin is completely atoned for and forgiven. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then said I, Here I am. Send me. Now, digging a little deeper because we've all read that passage. But what's unique to note about this passage is when the seraphim, an anointed angelic being, they were called seraphs or seraphs. What that word means, I found it interesting. I took the liberty of looking up the meaning of that for you. And it means to burn. To burn. This was an anointed being. Charged with dispensing the zeal of the Lord. The fire of God. The power of God. So why does Isaiah says, woe is me for I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the people amongst the people of unclean lips. Unclean in this situation, in this particular part of this, this passage probably symbolizes, I found this interesting, one, attitudes. God's concerned about your attitude. I'm a man of unclean lips. I've got wrong attitudes. Nothing worse than a Christian with a wrong attitude. You need a coal. A white hot coal. On your lips. It represented not only wrong attitudes. It represented actions. You see, attitudes become actions. And then thirdly, it represented his words. Because a person's words are a reflection of their thinking, which is related to their actions. So Isaiah could immediately identify with the people who were sinful because they were unclean. I dwell in the midst of an unclean, rebellious, perverse, immoral people. They're disobedient to the things of God. One of the things we in the church have to learn and learn quick is that if you want the anointing of the Lord and you want the favor of the Lord, you better not dwell among people or associate with people that are talking with an unclean mouth. Because they're going to affect your attitude. And if their words get into you and affect your attitude, eventually they're going to affect your actions. It'll be translated into the way you live, and pretty soon you'll be living loosey-goosey. Oh, I can miss church and still be a Christian. I can do this. I, y'all, don't think the, y'all don't think the pastor watches and prays during worship? I know who's plugged in and who's not. The Spirit of the Lord. You know why? Because I'm in the same position as Isaiah. I'm in the position of pastor and prophet and apostle. I'm one sent. I'm one who teaches. I'm one who discerns. Why? Because I'm charged with the responsibility of watching for your soul. So when I'm instructing you from the pulpit, I'm instructing you for the, for the expanse of giving life to your soul. So that you prosper and you're in health because your soul is prospering. Because you're giving the more earnest heed to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is important. You know why? 
Because if you don't take it in and respond to it, you'll be destroyed for lack of knowledge. What did we just talk about in giving? You give out of a free heart. Byproduct of that, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Where does it come from? By the Spirit of the Lord. I, I still marvel every time I come into a setting like this. And I'm, I'm teaching. That's why I'm admonishing you right now to listen. To, to, to be engaged. To not just engage your mind, but engage your heart. That's why when Isaiah saw it, and when he heard it, then he recognized how undone he was. He recognized how unworthy he was. Because now he sees himself in the flesh in light of the holiness of God. And he says, oh my God, I'm so undone. I'm so unclean. I'm so unworthy. The the holiness of God is so much greater and so much more powerful. What, What am I to do? And this anointed being that had the zeal of the Lord that was burning with the fire of God. I often wondered, we, we, all summer we'd, we was over at some of the Rodney Howard Brown meetings and he was a fire, fire. I thought, well, God, I know about the Holy Ghost and the outpouring, but when I started studying this, And I got on this, I saw this seraph was anointed with fire. Now I know where the fire is. The fire is for cleansing. The fire is for purification. The fire is to burn up anything that's unholy. The fire is to burn up anything that's impure and unclean. Fire purifies. And some of you need the fire of God burning in you because you're cold. Are you lukewarm? Just listen to your preacher this morning. I'm not going to deal with you. I have people come to me from time to time. Pastor, don't you know that so-and-so is going on in the church? Don't you know this and this and this? I said, yeah, I do. Aren't you going to deal with it? Aren't you going to talk to them? Nope. Why not? Don't you love them? Sure do. I've talked to people that I turn blue in the face and they don't get it. But when the Holy Ghost talks to you and he gets out of his little Holy Ghost, I don't like to be whipped by the Holy Ghost. And I promise you, you won't either. But I promise you this, he loves you and I would rather preach love, but he does chasten those he loves. He does. And He will bring that to your house. And there will come things into your life that will cause you to lose sleep at night, to walk the floor and cry and agonize with God to be delivered from it because He's trying to teach you obedience and He's trying to purify you and shake you out of your lethargic state. And do not think you can play let's make a deal with God and get, well, I'll just do some good things for, for people and just, be, and just play nice. Uh-uh. God doesn't look on the outward appearance. Oh, aren't they nice? They do this, this, and this. They do so many nice things for people. God never looks on the outside. He always looks on your heart. He's always looking at your heart. And we can discern where wisdom's coming from out of your mouth. Whether it's of God or of the flesh. Because of what's in your heart. Because with the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And so Isaiah's trying to get the message. He's in the midst of a rebellious people. He's in the midst of people that are speaking vile and perverse and unclean things. They cannot hear. They cannot see. They cannot speak properly. 
Why? Because they're rebellious. And they're disobedient. He's speaking to Israel. He's speaking to, he's speaking to at the time, God's people. This word is applicable that I'm speaking for the people of God today. If you want the fire of God, if you want the blessing of God, if you want the anointing of God, if you want the power of God, there's a way to attain it, and it comes through an obedient heart. A yielded spirit. And we quote verse 8, Here am I, Lord, send me, oh, I'm willing to go. You can't even get to that place until you first had the fire off the altar placed upon your lips. Because until you get your speech corrected, your conduct will not be corrected. What does that mean? You can't even hear from God. This, this was Israel's problem. This is much of the church's problem today. We can't hear from God because we're not willing to do it His way. We don't want that fire placed upon our lips. We were talking about it Wednesday night in Bible study. Job fell into a hard place, had everything taken from him. The devil took it. God allowed it. Matter of fact, God was out there trumpeting Job's life. Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in all the earth. Some of you feel that way today? Have you considered my servant? Put your name there. There's none like him in all the earth. And here comes the devil taking everything he's got. And then he has three of his best Christian friends show up and say, Job, let's analyze this thing. Have you had people? We got people in the kingdom. Instead of praying over stuff, instead of releasing the power of God on stuff, we want to get analytical. We want to figure it out. We want to psychoanalyze everybody. My God, you need wisdom from heaven at, that, at a time like that when you're going through stuff and you're hit a, you've hit, hit a difficult place in your life. You need the wisdom of heaven. But you need an obedient heart. You need the fire of God. You need the power of God. You need His anointing upon your life. Why? Because until you're willing to start flowing in that power and that anointing and you let the fire of God begin to touch your life, you can't even hear from Him. You can't see the things of God. You can't see it. Stuff that used to cloud your vision, fire will burn it up. You can see clearly again. Stuff that used to stop up your ears, you'd hear the preacher preaching with power and and, and fire and anointing. All of a sudden, fire, it'll burn that stuff out of there and you can hear clear. You can hear the things of God. You can see the things of God. Because until you can see and hear, you can't do. That's why he was saying, woe is me. I'm in the same class the rest of these guys are. I'm undone. But when he heard the voice of the Lord, and he came with the seraph, who was burning with the zeal of God and the fire of God, and he put that coal off the altar of God on his lips. See, some of us need to get back to the altar again. We need to just hit the altar and get on our face before God and spend a little carpet time and say, Lord, here I am. Everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, but I need your fire. I need your anointing. I need your power. Show up and touch these lips of clay that I can speak your word with power and authority. I can see the things you see. I can hear the things you want to say. Hallelujah. Got to hear it. Boy, if ever we lived in an age when the church needs to hear from God, bless your heart. There's a lot of voices out there. But we got to discern, are they voices or echoes? They back up what they say? Are they just in it for the money? Do they have a servant's heart? I sat in Rodney Howard Brown's office two weeks ago. A 
sat right across the table from him. He looked at me and he said, Pastor, pasta in South African accent. He said, how can I serve you? How can my church bless you? He didn't say, well, when you sow 10,000 into my ministry, we'll talk. Freely you receive. Freely give. How can I bless you? It, witness. That is, am I telling it accurately? Not because of the man, because of the heart. What's in the heart? So, said, still great awakening. I'll send a team. I want to bless you. I'm not going to give lip service to it. I'm going to send a team. So what will we do with that? When you get the fire of God right off the altar of God on your lips, and God's called this house to serve. How can we serve? How do we serve? But you've got to have the fire so you can see and so you can hear. Because you'll get flushed out real quick. If you haven't had the fire of God touch your mouth, transform your heart. You know what will surface? The flesh. You'll start whining and moaning and groaning and complaining because the work's too hard and the sacrifice is too great. And how can you say you're a Christian and a believer when Jesus gave everything? Shed his life's blood, lay down his life so you and I can enjoy the benefits of eternal life and the promises that he's given us. The freedoms that we enjoy. I'm just thankful I don't have to go to a psychiatrist's office and lay down in his couch. To psycho- the Holy Spirit analyzes me. Then he says, he not only says, well, let me tell you what you need to do, then he comes and says, now I'm going to give you power and authority that whatever you say, I'll back it up. And I'm going to touch your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 So you can be a voice, not an echo. A voice with fire. A voice with authority. A voice with... Well, what did they say about Jesus? This man speaks as one having authority. No man can speak unless... These, this revelation has to have come from God. Jesus was a master rabbi. You know what a master rabbi is? He's the rabbi that teaches other rabbis to be rabbis. You know what a master rabbi had to do? He had to know all the books of the Pentateuch. He had to know the Torah through and through and be able to quote it verbatim, word for word. He wasn't some little pipsqueak guy with a long robe and a beard running around the countryside just going, Oh, all we need is love. When he spoke, his words meant something. When he spoke, his words penetrated hearts and pricked minds. When he spoke, heaven backed it up. And when he said, get up and walk, people got up and walked. When blinded eyes, and he said, come seeing, they came seeing. When ears that were deaf were were unstopped, people came hearing. When he went by a funeral procession, he stopped the funeral procession and said, Son, get up! And he gave the boy back to his mother. The dead got up. Jesus didn't do anything by chance. I found it interesting the reason he waited four days to get to Lazarus' house because the Jews believed, according to mythology, that the spirit of a person hovered over them for at least three days. 
And he didn't want anybody to say, oh, well, it was the Spirit that just re-entered him and he got up because the Spirit had been hovering over him for three days. He waited for four days so there could be no argument. Oh, well, the Spirit's already departed. So when he called him forth and said, Lazarus, come forth, make no mistake, it was a divine miracle because the Spirit of the Lord re-entered that guy and here he comes forth. And he said, strip the grave clothes off of him. Uh Hallelujah. Heaven backed up what he said. Is anybody getting this? This is a powerful word. Because the Lord's saying, I want you to give voice to my word. You're going to need it in, in the days which are ahead. You're going to need this. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. And are you ready to declare it? You can't go around in some lukewarm, half-baked, call yourself a Christian state. Don't wind up void of the power of God like the seven sons of Sceva. We know Jesus and we know Paul, but who are you? And they came out of the demon-possessed man and jumped on them. You know where they found themselves naked? They started the first nudist camp. Because those spirits tore their clothes off of them. Y'all thought nudist camps was something unique to America? No. The devil got through with them. They had no clothes on. It's amazing what you find in the Bible. Some of y'all go around here like God's so prim and proper. Oh, God would never do that. (laughs) Here he goes. Uh Uh-huh. Because he's dealing with rebellious people. He's saying, I'm going to purify you. He will purify the sons of Levi. That they may offer an offering unto the Lord. An offering in righteousness. He's going to purify you. Don't come to Sunrise Church. You're going to get purified. We're going to get purified. But you know what happens when you get purified? You don't have to be afraid. All of heaven's backing you up now. Because you got the fire of God coming forth out of you. You got the power of God coming forth out, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I don't want this team when they come here to find a lukewarm, half dead, half baked church. And we ain't stirring this up. You know this has been a, this has been an ongoing thing here for, for years now, for months. And the Lord's been saying to Sunrise Church, prepare, get prepared. I've got things in store for you. I've got things I've called you to do. Where are the who am I, Lord? Send me. You first get the coal, you get the fire, so you can see and hear. And then God gives you... See, this wasn't a novel idea Isaiah came up with. When he saw the Lord high and lifted up, it was God's invitation saying, Isaiah, now you can step into my anointing. Now you're ready to serve. Now you're ready to flow. Now you're ready to go forth and be the minister I've called you to be. And he was God's invitation saying, here am I. Come on, Isaiah, are you ready? You can see it now. Where are the Isaiahs at sunrise? Where are the Isaiahs in the camp? That you've had a coal off the altar of God put on your lips. It's called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Anybody hearing me this morning? It's called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> When he comes on you, you ought to let him witness. Some of you are afraid to give voice to his word. I don't care where I am anymore. I can be in Cracker Barrel and start speaking in tongues. I'm not speaking in tongues for speaking in tongues. I'm giving voice to the word of the Lord. I'm giving voice to the anointing of the Lord. I'm giving voice to the power of his word. Hallelujah. You're not your own. You don't belong to you. You're bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus. You're representative of the king. The king. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on the throne. Heaven's man. 
heaven's majesty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Oh, God. God, give, give us a fresh vision. When Isaiah saw it, he, it, it was like he was having an out-of-body experience. He was being transfigured in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh, God, I see it now. All around me. People that are undone. People that are unclean. I dwell in the midst of a people that are unclean. They have unclean lips and unclean thoughts and unclean actions. God, come and purify us. It's when you get into rebellion. But when you obey Him, here am I. Come on. Sunrise, do you know how anxious the Father is for us to say, here am I? Here am I? I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, get on the altar of sacrifice. Get on the altar of burnt offering. Your life becomes a burnt offering. Everything that's not like God, burn it up. Burn up the lethargy. Burn up the rebellion. Burn up the ant- antichrist spirit. Burn up wrong attitudes. Burn up wrong thoughts. Get on the altar, the burnt offering. I presume... I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable worship. Hallelujah. Oh, God. When He's among us like this. See, that's why I'm I'm talking to you about being engaged here. Because when y'all are sitting on these pews... Oh, you don't have to be here responsible for this word. But let me clue you in. Let me give you a little clue. Every word that comes out of here, that comes out of the mouth of God, that comes out of the mouth of heaven and passes through your ear gate, you become responsible for it. And God will require it of you. Because the words I'm speaking are life. The words I'm speaking are to bless you. The words I'm speaking are to give you power. The words I'm speaking are to give you all authority. If Jesus could say it, why can't you? If Jesus could say all authority and all power is given to me in heaven and earth, behold, I give you that same power. I give you that same authority. If Jesus could say it, why can't you? Maybe the better question is, why won't you? Not a question of you can't. Of course you can. It's like my sixth grade teacher used to do me when I I'll never forget her name was Margaret Moore. She was an English she was English through and through, boy. She made sure she drilled she drilled proper grammar, proper sentence structure into us. She and, and she did practical application. I'd raise my hand, Miss Moore, can I go to the bathroom? She'd say, I don't know, can you? The proper term is May I? And I would, so she corrected. Didn't take but a few times. Miss Moore, may I go to the bathroom? Sure. Get it right. Get it right. You come to God and you ask him things. God, can I? Can I? He said, I don't know. Can you? Is that in Scripture? People come to Lord, that I might be made whole. Do you have faith? Can you? Do you believe I can do this? Do you believe? Do you believe? According to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith, so be it. So be it unto you. Right? Is that what the Word says? Amen. If Jesus could do it, why won't we? He said, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Nothing will hurt you. Nothing will hurt you. It may sting you for a while. You may feel like you've been wasp bit. It'll sting you for a while, but it won't deal the death blow. I've given you power over that. Pull the stinger out. Put a little ash potato on it. It'll draw the poison out and keep on going. No, didn't know ash potato would do that, did you? Just scrape a little, get you a little potato, scrape it, put it on the sting. 
leave it there and it'll draw all the poison out. You've got to have stuff that'll draw. You've got to have someone that'll draw. Oh, is there scripture for that? If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. I'll draw all men up. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in here so strong right now. Oh, my dear God. I'm serious, folks. The Holy Ghost, he's here healing. Some of you, some of you, right now I'm just going to pause right here. Some of you are carrying stuff in your body. You're carrying stuff in your mind. God says, the green light, I'm healing you right now. I'm healing you right by faith. Turn your faith loose. Turn your faith loose. Turn your faith loose. In Scripture, you don't even have to be saved. Some of said, well, when I get saved. And some of y'all, did that hurt your ears when that passed over your ears? They're not saved. Jesus healed people that weren't saved, and they got saved. <laughs> That's how much he loves people. Y'all, we in the church, we've got it all backwards. We say, well, get saved, and God will heal you. It's not the way he did it in Scripture. Sadducees and Pharisees and tried to ha- mess the man up born blind. He said his mother and dad must have messed up and this is some sin that's come on him and befallen him because his mom and dad messed up. He said, I don't care what you boys say. All I know is, once I was blind, now I see. <laughs> oh, when you've experienced it, you can't take it away. Because the world didn't give it to you. The world can't take it. Oh, rasa bunda bako se telaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord's healing some people in this house right now. Some of y'all thought you had to come get in a healing line and us anoint you like a grease pig. You don't have to be anointed with oil. It's good. They did it in the New Testament. We can do it. We can anoint rags. We can anoint prayer cloths. We can anoint you down. But you can sit right there where you are in the presence of Almighty God and be delivered in your mind, set free in your body, healed, delivered, and made whole. All you got to do is release your faith and give voice to the word of the... Oh, hallelujah. Stuff you've been struggling with in your family. Stuff you've been struggling with in your family. Give voice to the word of the Lord. Come on. Give voice to the word of the Lord. (laughs) It may take a little while, but give voice to the word. I knew I stood on the word of the Lord. I went through some stuff with my family. I know. Some of y'all think, well, Pastor, you don't know about family problems. My mom and daddy just took me out for my birthday first time in five years. Took me to eat at the Japanese steakhouse. I had steak, shrimp and chicken, teriyaki chicken. David and Debbie took me to Bahama Breeze. I've had a good time in the Holy Ghost. We've had a good time. Huh? The Lord will bring your family back together. He's a repairer of the breach, He's a rebuilder of the wall. Things that the enemy has stolen, God will put it back. God will restore it. Hallelujah. i got to give credit where credit's due, too. I know my mother-in-law's saved. She took me out to eat last Sunday. She is saved. She wanted. She took me to the Red Lobster. I got through eating that good meal. I said, that woman has to be a Christian. She'll take her, not just her preacher, her son-in-law out. Hallelujah. There's favor on her life. She's an intercessor. I want her praying for me. I value her prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But hey, I walked through that stuff, but I gave voice to the word of the Lord. Some people have come to me and said, Now you better be careful. This is your family. You better walk soft. Better be careful. Turn it over to the Holy Ghost. Turn it over to the Holy Ghost. I turned it over to the Holy Ghost. And guess what? He just brought everything full circle. What did he do? He brought my mother, and my sister, 
and my dad and my brother and all back in there. And we looked at each other and said, I forgive you and I love you. And we're going to walk on together. We didn't have to go through the fine points. Well, you did this and you said this and he said this and said that. We said, I forgive you. Why? Because Jesus forgave me. I love you. It wasn't, well, when you get your plane flying right and you start acting right, we'll welcome you back into the family. No, I forgive you. I love you. Let's walk on together. Let's go to heaven together. Is that okay? Is that all right? Had to get a coal off the altar. For some of you, your mouth won't let you say those things. Because you can't see it and you can't hear it yet. You need... There's cleansing fire in this place this morning. There's purifying fire. There's refining fire. I feel it in here this morning. It's all over the place. It's all over the place. It's like, it's like a day of Pentecost experience I'm seeing right now. Oh, oh, cloven tongues like as a fire. Cloven tongues. Distributed tongues. Where, wherever the fire needs to go. If, wherever he needs to burn, burn, Holy Ghost. Wherever he needs to burn, burn. Because stuff's going to start coming out of your mouth. You're going to look back and go, did I just say what I thought I said? Yeah, because it was the Holy Ghost. The fire of God burning. The fire of God flowing out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when you do that and you begin to give voice to his word, that's when the benefits come. That's when the benefits come. What are you talking about, Pastor? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it'll be done. It'll be done. Heaven backs up what you say because you're the voice of God, not an echo. Okay? Y'all getting this? Hallelujah. 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 Lord, Come on, let's thank Him for healing right now. Lord, I thank You for healing. I thank You for healing in our physical bodies, but I thank You for healing of minds, healing of hearts, healing of relationships, healing of, healing of our mouths. Lord, that you, You're setting fire, fire, fire over our mouths. Hallelujah. Oh, the seraphim of God, the seraph of God, the seraph of God is flowing in here this morning. The seraph of God. He's coming and he's touching your lips. He's touching your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're opening up our eyes of understanding, our ears to hear what you're saying. We hear it, God. We hear it. We hear it because we, we've been cleansed. Your fire cleanses. Your fire burns out any impurity. Your fire, fire burns out anything that's not like Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So now, God... We just call forth the resources of healing. We call forth the resources of healing in our bodies. Hallelujah. 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 There it is. There it is. There it is. Healing right now. Hallelujah. Healing. 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 Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Restoration of your family. Restoration of your family. Restoration. Hallelujah. Renewal in, your mom, renewal in your mom's spirit. What she suffered is lost. God's going to make it up and completely renew it a hundredfold. Everything the devil's tried to steal from her, steal relationships, steal her young'uns, I, I decree and declare it right now. Come on, somebody give voice over your situations. I may not get to all of you, but you need to give voice to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. But over all of it, over all of it, because your eyes, right now your eyes are going to see clearly and your ears are going to hear and out of your mouth, out of your mouth is going to flow fire and power. Oh! Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh, some of you, be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, resembe lembaraka soto reste lebeka ha. Rombarada basa tarabaka sa ted nedelebe. Ah, reste patama. Think it not strange that the life that you've lived before those little ones before those loved ones, before those children. It is a living witness. It is a testimony. And out of your innermost being is flowing rivers. It's going to flow rivers of life, 
rivers of living water. It's coming forth with power and with anointing. Hallelujah. Jesus is being lifted up and they're being drawn. They're being drawn to Jesus by the power and the anointing of the witness of your life that the Holy Ghost is flowing out of you. He's flowing out of you. He's flowing out of you. He's flowing out of you right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Renewed mind. Renewed mind. Renewed mind. There's a renewed mind. God's doing a whole new. He's restructuring. He's reshaping. He's reforming. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, rasa, banda, boto, rata. Ha, ristere, become barasto. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's a new work going on in there, brother. There's a new work, John. There's a new work. There. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remolding, reshaping, refining, rebuilding, renewing. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Right over these eyes, they're going to see. They're going to see... F- through a different lens, the lens of the Holy Ghost. These ears are going to hear, they're going to hear audio waves of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And out of that mouth is going to come forth power and authority and anointing to set captives free, to deliver, to bind up broken hearts, to build up spirits, to renew, because the Spirit of God and the anointing of the Lord, come mightily, Holy Spirit, come mightily. Oh, Oh, hallelujah. I release the fire of God. Come on, somebody help me pray. Fire! The fire! The fire of God. Hallelujah. The anointing of God. The zeal of God. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have to fall in the floor. Hallelujah. Just receive Him. He's there. He's all over you. Hallelujah. More than just intellect. God's given you a a spirit to go with the wisdom and the intellect He's put in your spirit. Hallelujah. A willing heart. There's a willing heart there. A willing heart. Now go after the things of God. Hallelujah. I loose the fire of God in you. The fire of God in you. The anointing of God in you. Hallelujah. 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 The fire of God. The fire of God. The anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Steve, Susan, get up and start going anointing people. Kathy, get up and start anointing. Just lay hands on people right now. Release the fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Hallelujah. When I'm talking about the fire, He's doing it over your eyes and ears. Hallelujah. 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 Fire of God. Hallelujah. To heal, to deliver, to set free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. (laughs) Never the same again. Oh, Rambasa Telebeko. Reda Bananda Bato. Hallelujah. Fire. Fire of God. Hallelujah. 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 There it is. There it is. Receive it. There's willing hearts in this place. Yes. 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 Oh, Rese Mamanda Bokota. Barata Batse. Come on, somebody pray with me. Right now, all up and down this spine. And all, oh, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, let the warmth and the anointing, oh, rasa, banda, boca, rata, ha, restate me, amba, soto, rata. Holy Spirit, what you promised, hallelujah. You will finish out your tenure. The Lord's going to raise you up and everything that the Holy Spirit has promised you, He's going to bring to pass in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And what the doctors have said, the Holy Spirit has come in and stepped in and brought healing And He's going to lift you up, raise you up, strengthen you. And you're going to fulfill your tenure. And you're going to retire with authority and power and anointing. The mouth of the Lord has declared it. And the Lord's spoken it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because He wants to show Himself great. He wants to show Himself great to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive it. Just receive the fire of God. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 How about it, Riley? You ready? You ready? Give me your hand. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, she wants the fire of God. Hallelujah. You want the fire of God, don't you? You want, oh, rasta bara bahata. Hallelujah. <laughs> From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Holy Spirit. Yes. Fill her full of your anointing. Hallelujah. 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 You're a daughter set apart. You're, 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 out of, you're out of season, but the Holy Spirit says, I'm bringing you into season. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, rasambanda boko rabba. Hallelujah. Oh, fire. 
The fire of God. Hallelujah. 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 Son, there's a word in you. The Holy Ghost is calling it forth. Don't be afraid to give voice to the word of the Lord. Don't be afraid to give voice to his anointing. Because his power is on you. His anointing's on you. And he's called you. He's called you to be a light, to be a witness. But he's called you to release his power and his anointing. Wherever you, you're a carrier of it. You're a carrier of it. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Coal off the altar, Holy Ghost. Coal off the altar. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Hallelujah. Oh, we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More hunger. More of you. More desire. More power. More authority. More anointing. Come on, brother. Just, oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. It's yours. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha. The Lord says, I'm giving you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. I'm giving you the desires of your heart. Step into it. Don't be afraid. I've opened the door, says the Lord. I've opened the door. I've given you the opportunity. It's mine. It's my opportunity. All I need you to do is say, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Use me. <laughs> I'm the vessel. I'm available. I'm ready to be used for your honor, for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, you thought you were going to get away. Forget it. Forget it. Hallelujah. More, Jesus. Oh, there's more. There's more. There's more. Oh, he's already using you, but there's more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Renewed mind, liberated, set free. Fire! Hallelujah. Anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) That's it. He loves it when you give voice to his word. He loves it when you give voice to his word. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody receiving this this morning? You receiving this this morning? Give voice to His Word. Hallelujah. I feel the fire of God on you this morning. The fire of God on you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Madeline, come here. Come quick, 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 quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, it's time for you to receive everything. You need to, you need to get all of it. Get all of it. Get all that he has for you. Get all that he has for you. Everything the devil's stolen. Ha. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, it's time for a hundredfold return. Give voice to the word of the Lord. Take back what the enemy's stolen out of your mind, out of your spirit. Hallelujah. Receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. Come on down here. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, some of y'all ought to be... Let, let the Holy Spirit direct you to some people. Let the Holy Spirit direct you to place. If, you, if you're going to give voice to His Word, this is a good place to start working it out. Try it out. Begin to move in the anointing. Begin to move in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Right there. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Get up and get around to some people. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Give voice to the word of the Lord. Begin to declare it over people. Come on, brother. Remember, this is not a game. This is life and death. This is not a game. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More, Lord. Fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, He's taken the coal off the altar. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. That's it. Let these sisters get in here and pray. Come here. Grab him and hold him. Hold him. Get up, daughter. Hold him. Sometimes the Lord says to hold people. Hallelujah. Sometimes the Lord says to hold people. But I want you to hear the word of the Lord. I'm working for your good. I'm going to work everything for your good. Everything's going to be all right. Don't be afraid. Don't fret. Don't worry. Don't get frustrated. Wait on the timing of the Holy Ghost. I'm working it for your good and for my glory. For your good and my glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, let your fire burn in them. Let your fire burn. There's healing. The fire brings healing. I release healing. I release anointing. I release renewal. There's a restoration. Hallelujah. Things are coming that you never dreamt possible, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to give, don't be afraid to give voice to his word. Give voice to his word. Hallelujah. Love. Love of the Holy Ghost. Pour it in, pour it in, pour it in, pour it in. Pour it in. Pour it in. in. Are y'all understanding why the Holy Spirit's doing this among you? You will use this next week. You will use this. The Holy Spirit's going to send people to you. And this word that you've received this morning will be quickened in your spirit. By quickening, I mean the Holy Spirit will bring remembrance of it to you. And he will say to you, utilize it now. Give voice to the word of the Lord now. Don't wait. Don't delay. When you release it, the fire will be released. The fire's on you now. The fire's on you now. When you release it, it'll be like your mouth's on fire. Hallelujah. With the anointing, because it's, it's in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything. 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 
God is at work among you, ladies and gentlemen. God is at work in your midst. Thank you, Jesus. If Jesus said it, are you saying it? If Jesus said it, are you declaring it? Hallelujah. Because I'm going to drill down a little deeper in this next week. And we're going to get into some things that the church has been doing. But we just sweep things under the rug that we don't want to deal with. Things that we don't want to confront. Things that we sell ourselves short for. Things that we let people be destroyed for. What does that mean, Pastor? It means something like this. When you see folks that have missed for two or three weeks, you ought to call them and encourage them. You ought to tell them you love them. You ought to find out what's going on. You ought to be praying for them. Right? Shouldn't we? Uh -huh. What's going on? I'm praying for you. I'm concerned about you. Why? Because you've been forsaking the assembly of yourself. There's been some good teaching going on house of God that would empower you to be an overcomer. You missed it. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's not because it's me. I'm thankful for it. And the reason I'm thankful for it is because I asked for it. But there's some powerful word been going forth. There's some powerful word been going forth out of this, out of this preacher. I, I leave this pulpit every week and I have to sit... Or, alone with God for at least a couple of hours just processing what the Holy Spirit said to us. Just processing. I went on Ustream last week and saw where 465 people has been on Ustream viewing our site. So I'm glad they're watching. I, hopefully it'll draw them here. Some people, they're just, they're going to watch it. It's okay. Watch. But get hungry for the fire of God. Get hungry for the anointing. It's ready to explode here among you. People born into the kingdom. Faster than you can keep up with. God's mobilizing a whole, a whole army. The weapons of our warfare aren't carnal. They're mighty through God. They're mighty through God. He's calling home prodigal sons and daughters. He's calling them from the, from the north, south, east, west. He's calling them. He's calling them. He's calling them. Jesus is being lifted up. They, they can't escape this. You, you can't escape the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So come on. In about three weeks, we're going to be out there, out here within a 500-yard radius of this church. There's a church not more than 15 minutes from here. The last Great Awakening team that went to that church, within a week's time, they went from 50 people in attendance to 300 to 500 to 800. And that was people within a 500-yard radius of their church. They got out and began to touch lives. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Find out in three weeks. Better get. That's why I'm saying it takes fire. It takes anointing. You can't even see the things of God until God burns out the stuff of your flesh. So you can see. Why am I so passionate about a Christian school here? I got kids sitting in my Bible class that feel unwanted, unloved. They're hurting. They can't make the grade. They can't keep up. 
they're not anywhere near college material. They don't know where they're going to go. They don't know who they're going to become. They don't know what they're going to do. They're looking for identity. And the enemies duped so many teenagers into pleasure that they think they can find it in all kinds of areas and all kinds of venues and all kinds of other people that they think they can satisfy it and all it is is a temporary fix of the flesh. And they're still unsatisfied. Here's one sitting right over here that graduated our school. If it wasn't for the grace of God, she'd be dead right now because last January she had a police officer head on, head on collision, spent a month in the hospital told us her story just last week how God delivered her and set her free and kept her otherwise she'd been dead almost every bone in her body was broken leg broke in five places got rods all in her legs what are you saying because she was rebellious she was disobedient I'm not saying that of her to be critical I'm telling her because oh the love of God Oh, the love of God. If it hadn't have been for God, her mother had done buried her. She'd be a statistic now. See, what we don't, what these guys don't know is they've been sowing the seed of the Word in every Bible class, every chapel service, every math class, every science class. It's Word, Word, Word. My Bible teaches me that the Word of God doesn't return void. It will accomplish whereunto we've sent it. It has keeping power. It has delivering power. It'll stay the hand of death. And it'll fulfill the promises of God. And there's living proof of it sitting right there on your church pew. This is not a game, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real deal. And what God's promised some of you, Jan, what God spoke over Darwin this morning, I fully expect. I fully expect God's already, God birthed that in my spirit three weeks ago. That's why I said, they don't have to be a Christian. Most of the time, what God wants to do is show how great He is. See where Isaiah was? He was in the midst of a people that were undone and unclean. They were unsaved. They weren't Christians. They were rebellious, disobedient. God shows up and proves how great He is, shows Him His holiness, and He falls on the ground and says, Oh, God! That's when, when God shows up. Don't you want God to show up in people's lives? When He wakes up one morning and says, You know, I felt something pop and crack in my back last night and Everything's okay now. Must be something to this God. Must be something to this healing Jesus. I used to couldn't get along with the, without a six pack every week. But now when I put it in my mouth, it makes me want to puke. Somehow, I don't know what's going on, what's happening. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. I used to be anti-God. I used to be turned off to God. I didn't want anything to do with God. But I can't get enough of Him now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right. It's fire. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. That's a byproduct of fire. That's a byproduct of fire. It's not strange fire, it's holy fire. It's holy fire. Let me tell you something, God's having to teach me about fire. I went to four weeks of camp meeting, I thought some of those people were lit. I did. God had to deliver me of skepticism. But when he took me into his word and showed me fires in his word, and the purpose of fire, and what fire does, and what the fire of God will accomplish... I said, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm thoroughly convinced. Joy is a byproduct of fire. Joy is a byproduct of fire. <laughs> the world is hopeless and sick and full of despair. 
Why shouldn't the people of God be full of the joy of the Lord? He says His joy is your strength. His joy is your strength. He said you're a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. You start laughing around people, they're going to think you're a little peculiar. Peculiar means strangely wonderful. They'll look at you strange, and they'll think in their hearts, boy, I wish I had some of that. But they can't see it until they get the fire to cleanse them. Hallelujah. You get them under the fire. You get folks under the... Y'all seeing this? Oh, thank God for the baptism of fire this morning. Thank... Oh! Ha, ha, ha! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let me tell you something. Some of you... Don't look at me skeptically. Don't look at me like a calf Look at a new gate. You know, the byproduct, the byproduct of fire is freedom. If the Son has set you free... I'm free. I'm free to worship Him. I'm free to laugh. I'm free to manifest joy. I'm free to manifest power. I'm free to manifest His anointing. I'm free to give voice to His Word. Because when I give voice to His Word, heaven comes down. Oh! Why do you think Jesus said to the disciples, when you pray, pray like this. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. Whatever's going on in heaven, let it happen in me. And those created cherubims and seraphims are sitting around the throne, flying around all the time, just praising the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, just saying, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God of hosts. Y'all see why the power fell this morning when you started singing? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing. Praise to the King of kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. If creation gets it, why can't we? If creation gets it, why can't we? Right? With all creation. The trees of the field clap their hands. And he says, then you ought to go out with joy. Y'all feel good about this? Oh, thank you, Jesus. You, you, oh, you, you are armed and dangerous now. You are armed and dangerous now. You go out with the fire of God, with the anointing. Oh, rasambanda botoga. Oh, the devil can't hurt you. Anytime he shows up, my Lord, storm the gate. What did he say? The gates of hell. I found out where the gates are. These are gates. These are gates. These are gates. These are, this is a gate. This is a gate. The gates of hell shall not. When you've got the fire of God, your sight's been cleansed and your hearing's been cleansed and you see the power of God and you see the fire of God at work on your behalf and you begin to speak and give voice to His Word. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.